G'day, a uh, quick video on the no-chill process. After I did the no-chill uh, fermentation of the beer in my last video, people have been asking a little bit more about the process, so I thought I'd show it quickly. Um, most of this footage was videoed a couple of years ago, um, but of course it's still relevant. Um, I apologize for the sound and, and uh, pitch quality uh, in this part of the video because I'm using my webcam where I usually cast on Friday nights, Australian time, eight o'clock, Vaughan Live. <laughs> you will have to change your recipe, uh, especially if there's a lot of uh, late addition hops in your normal recipe that you're trying to no chill, um, because the wort stays very hot after you put it in the cube. So you boil it as usual, then you put it in the cube and it sits there hot. Um, the basic way they work it out is that it adds on a 20 minutes worth of bittering. So if you put a flame out addition into your recipe and then you put it in the cube, that translates to a 20 minute hop addition. Um, I'm not gonna go into it in detail. I'll leave some links uh, down below that you can uh, read up on it. Um, but basically that's it. So you can adjust your, your hop additions um, and use a lot of, you'd use a lot of uh, dry hopping in that to compensate um, for aroma uh, in your final recipe. But as I said, we're not going to go too detailed into the, the recipe conversions. Um, the other thing that you will have to change is your amounts. Unless you get a, happen to get a cube that's exactly the size uh, you want to brew at, um, then you, you don't have to change anything. But uh, most of the cubes I've been using here are 17 litres, and I usually want to brew about 21 litres or 23 litres. So I make the, the brew a little bit stronger and um, dilute it with water uh, just prior to pitching the yeast once it's cooled down of course um, I'll show you a quick uh, you can use a, a dilution tool you can find them on the internet Beersmith's got one in it uh, to show you how much you have to change the recipe um, to get the right OG to dilute down to your right OG <laughs> does that make sense? yes it does make sense um, I'll show, quickly show you on Beersmith uh, what I mean uh, there's a dilution tool so um, I'll show you how that works right now Okay, so if you're going to use Beersmith uh, to work it out, or you can use anything else, as I said before. Uh, Beersmith has one down here in tools. So here's a dilution tool in Beersmith. Uh, my no-chill cube is 17 litres, so we're going to put that in there, because it's a starting volume of beer. Um, and how much are you going to dilute it with? So if I was going to make a... Um, a 21 litre batch then I'd be adding four litres onto 17 to make 21 as a total and down the bottom here they show you the total volume and the final specific gravity so if I wanted a specific gravity of uh, 1.050 in the fermenter I'd have to raise this up uh, maybe 64 that's too much it's gone to 50 that's too much so we'll take that down to, uh, I'll try zero not quite enough 61 62 there you go with a specific gravity uh, for my wart that I'll be putting into my no chill cube with 17 liters at uh, 1.062 when I end up delete diluting it with water um, four liters I'll end up with 21 liters at uh, my desired specific gravity of 1.050. So it's pretty easy to work out what you need to put into the cube if you're planning on diluting it uh, later on ferment, when you ferment it. And so anyway, once you've got your recipe worked out, um, it's basically a normal brew day until it gets to the chilling um, and it's much quicker to do because you don't have to wash a chiller or sanitize a chiller or clean a chiller afterwards the recipe I'm brewing here is a mild um, I'll leave the rest a link down for that there'll be the recipe will be on cellar dwellers as well um, I'm not going to go too much into the into the recipe or uh, process of the recipe I'll just skim through it quickly because it's more about the end bit with the no chill 
uh, anyway, we'll have a look at the video now. Just gonna add my salt. The 12 liters of strike water. Oil. Still put the worth lock in, 10 minutes to go. So that's the boil up, off. So that's the boil finished. And turn the elements off. And I'm still gonna whirlpool like usual. Go away, plane. And stick the lid on and just let that settle for about 10 minutes. So what you're going to need is something like this. Don't just use any container because they will get soft because you are putting 90 degree wort in there, probably hotter 95 degree wort. So they will get soft. You've got to make sure you get a nice strong container. This is 17 litres. So the world pool's finished, we just go straight into the cube. We just got to fill it up to the top. You want as least amount of air in there as you can get.
the right at the top, put the lid on. Nice and tight. And the next thing you do is turn it on the side. Or even upside down. The reason we turn it on its side is so the hot wart, if the, if the handle's hollow, I don't think this one actually is, the wart goes into the handle, it also goes up around the lid, sanitizes all that because the wart's worked so hot. So you just leave it there a minute or two and you can roll it over a couple of times just to make sure all sides get sanitized. It's sterilized by the hot wart. Really is that easy. Now the good thing about nature is if you've got enough wart left, you can draw off enough to make your starter with. Now I've got a litre of wort to use for my yeast starter. I'll probably I'll just boil that again just to make sure it's all sanitised in here. Uh, cool it and then pitch my yeast in it for my starter. And then about a day or two I can use this same wort for my to pitch into my fermenter. There's my yeast starter ready to go. It's been in there for two days. The cube's cooled down to pitch and temp 18 degrees. I have my sanitized fermenter ready to go. In. Could have said I did sanitise the top of the uh, around the top of the lid of the cube. Now that splashing is good for it because it aerates it. So I'll put five, top that up with five litres of water. Now the yeast starter. And I just use a fridge magnet to stop the stir bar going in. There we go. I've attached the temperature probe and insulated it against the side of the fermenter. We're ready to go. Okay, so that's it. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. Uh, down the, leave a comment down the bottom. Ask on Cellar Dwellers. Ask on the Cellar Dwellers Facebook page. Um, no problem at all. We'll try and answer your questions. But that's it. It's very easy. If you haven't got a chiller or you, you, you have to cut your brew day short for any reason, uh, it's great to have a cube hanging around that you can use for it. It's uh, very easy. And most home brew shops now will sell uh, their version of a no-chill. Um, so you can use that and usually reuse the container. Uh, it's a good way of tasting an uh, all-grain beer um, without brewing it yourself. And it'll usually taste a lot better than the extract kits. Um, 
I'm not saying that you can't brew good beer with extract, but uh, they're worth a go. They're a little bit expensive. Here in Australia, they're about $45 a kit. Um, but they're worth a try if you haven't brewed one before. They're very easy. All right, cheers.